Welcome to the L.M. Montgomery's Institute's 14th Biennial International Conference, coming to you this year virtually. Kate Scarth, Emily Worcester, and I would like to invite you to spend some time with us over the next five days. There will be new written, recorded, and visual material rolling out each day, and it won't stop there. These five days are a launch, a sampling of what to expect over the next six to eight months. But first, let us introduce each other. Kate Scarth is, as many of you know, Chair of L.M. Montgomery Studies with the L.M. Montgomery Institute, Assistant Professor of Applied Communication, Leadership and Culture at the University of Prince Edward Island, and Editor of the Journal of L.M. Montgomery Studies. Those are just a few of the many hats she wears. Kate. Okay. Thank you for the introduction, Leslie. I'm delighted to be here to welcome you all to the Ella Montgomery Envisioned Forum. Um, so I will briefly introduce Emily Wooster um, before we get going. So Emily is the former LMMI visiting scholar. She is the co the founding co-editor of the Journal of Ella Montgomery Studies. So we have spent a lot of time together <laughs> virtually um, putting the journal together. Um, Emily was also the co-organizer of what would have been the on-site 2020 Ella Montgomery Envision Conference. And you'll know, many of you will know her from the Ella Montgomery and Reading Conference, which she co-organized and where she was a keynote speaker in 2018. So Emily, I'll turn it over to you. Thank, thanks, Kate. Um, and I get the pleasure of welcoming our fearless leader, uh, Dr. Leslie Clement, Clement, who is the Institute's new visiting scholar. Um, and many of you probably know Leslie as well. She's presented papers, chaired sessions, and been an active part of seven past LMMI conferences on various and works on various topics in children's literature. Um, she has co-edited volumes in children's literature, and she worked with Rita Bode to co-edit Ella Montgomery's Rainbow Valleys, The Ontario Years, 1980. 11 to 1942, among many other texts. Um, and she is very much the, the, the heart and soul of the conference and in making the next few days possible for all of us. So an event such as this requires a huge support team. Um, and we'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank those who worked on first the original on-site conference and then this forum. Okay, all right. So before we go any further, I want to acknowledge the fact that the University of Prince Edward Island and the Ella Montgomery Institute are located, of course, in Prince Edward Island. Um, and we would like to acknowledge that uh, the land on which UPEI and the Institute um, are located is the traditional and unceded territory of the Abaque Mi'kmaq First Nation. So... Thank you to the Mi'kmaq First Nation and thank you to Leslie. I just want to echo Emily's comments that Leslie is the mastermind behind the Ella Montgomery Envision Forum. She's done all of the heavy lifting, putting the conference and now the forum together. The conference really is the crowning achievement, the big event for the visiting scholar. And of course, we were also disappointed when it got canceled, but I think that disappointment must have been particularly um, palpable to Leslie, but she's rallied and pulled together something that is just going to be really wonderful. I really admire, Leslie, how you have really uh, taken this opportunity to encourage encourage people to do really creative, innovative things um, that you couldn't do in a face-to-face -face conference. Um, so that's been really exciting. And I know you'll all look forward to seeing what those exciting uh, projects are over the next few uh, few days, next five days. Um, anyway, it's been a joy to work with you and I can't wait to see what we do with the Journal of Ella Montgomery Studies. Um, and I know that uh, although Emily, um, she has made the, all of this possible in a lot of ways um, as the found Co or I, I keep stumbling over that, the, co the founding co-editor of the Journal of Ella Montgomery Studies. Um, and we together, we helped, you know, we built um, the, the journal um, on which the, the forum is housed. And I know, Emily, you'll continue to be involved with the journal um, as we finish up with Ella Montgomery and reading. 
So um, there are many more people to acknowledge. Um, of course, the Ellen Montgomery Steering Committee, who does much of the work behind the scenes to make sure that all of the LMMI projects run smoothly. So that includes Philip Smith, Betsy Epperly, Leslie, Emily, Tracy Doucette, Melanie Fishbay, Laura Robinson, Donald Moses, Jean Mitchell, David Hickey, and myself. Um, and we'd particularly like to acknowledge the conference committee made up of folks from the steering committee um, who are obviously highly engaged in putting together the 2020 conference. Um, we want to thank Melanie Fishbane, as always, for coordinating social media. She's helped by Elisa Gillespie, student assistant, um, and she also had a social media team put together, and we're thankful for their um, active engagement and support of the Institute, and that includes Allison Hudson, Brenton Dickinson, Audrey Loisel, Caroline Jones, Rebecca Thompson, and Michaela Wypond. A big thank you to Donald Moses um, as well, who is our technical guru, Alexander O'Neill, who bet who built the framework um, on which the journal um, exists. And then um, Rob Drew as well, who continues to support us as the journal and now the forum evolves. So thank you, Rob, for always answering our emails and making adjustments mm -hmm. large and small. Uh, Simon Lloyd always deserves our gratitude for all of his advice. Um, Simon is the, among other things, the copyright librarian, so offers a lot of valuable advice um, on that front. And uh, we'd also like to thank Elisa Gillespie. A lot of you will have received emails from her um, in her role as the journal editorial assistant, um, as well as managing the email. Elisa keeps us organized, uploads all the content to the back end of the website. So she really makes a lot of the magic happen. Heidi um, Herring, uh, another student assistant, has done a lot of our technical and artistic work. So a lot of the things that look really good or that are more complicated technically, we have Heidi to thank for that. Um, and then finally, we would very much like to thank, of course, the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada for supporting this project, the conference. Um, they allow us to hire Hire student assistance um, to make sure that the website is up to date and all of that really important um, work. And then Leslie Cudmore at UPEI Research Services was our go-between, making sure that as we transitioned from an on-site conference into the virtual forum, that Shirk was happy with all of those changes. So thanks to Leslie um, as well. So as you can see, there's a huge community that supports us and guides us. So thank you to all of you. I also have a very special thank you for to all of you who submitted proposals in response to our original call for papers last year. Um, it's always the, the um, highlight of the fall to get to read all these exciting new proposals. Um, and especially a thank you to all of those, those of you who've expressed um, your creativity and your enthusiasm in moving the conference online and being adaptable and being willing to try new things in this sort of new virtual space. Um, and so thanks to those of you who launched or, or given us things for the launch of the forum and who are going to continue working on your Ella Montgomery and Vision material over the next six months to keep us all busy <laughs> and, and engaged with the, the conference theme. So, and yes, a reminder that the deadline for the Vision mm -hmm. material is the end of the year, the 31st of December, 2020. The call for papers is on the news page of the journal. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't uh, thank the, our original reading team, who was uh, Yoshiko Akamatsu, Paul Keane, and Wendy Roy. Um, and I'd like to uh, reiterate the, the thanks to our student assistants, again, Alyssa Gillespie and Heidi Herring, without whose technical expertise, much of the content on this forum well, just wouldn't have happened. <laughs> and to uh, Jane Ledwell, our proofreader par excellence. Mm -hmm. um, and to Kate Scarth, whose attention to detail, commitment to Montgomery studies and camaraderie are greatly appreciated by me, but I, I know that I speak for the rest of the Institute when I say that. So thank you, Kate. So what to expect over the next five days? Well, as I mentioned earlier, this is just a sampling of what's going to be rolled out over the next six to eight months. There are creative projects. There's going to be scholarly content. There'll be inf information about what the Institute has done over the last couple of years, what it's currently doing, and what it plans on doing. And fun. 
well, we can't sip a glass of wine or throw back some oysters. And oh, I am going to miss right, uh, the biennial lobster supper. At least it's my biennial supper. I, I, I imagine Kate gets it more frequently. <laughs> we can enjoy at Cayley. We can shop online for uh, new books on Montgomery. And we can go on a virtual tour of Montgomery-related sites. Some of this is going to be in written form, some recorded. And, well, as is appropriate for a forum devoted to Montgomery and vi uh, vision, much of it will be visual. And there's going to be a challenge. I'll let Kate talk to the challenge. As fans of Montgomery, I'm sure you've all encountered references to Montgomery or to Anna Green Gables in Unexpected Place on a Netflix TV series, for example, just when you're out, you know, going for a walk and in a contemporary novel. So Elisa Gillespie and I have created an Instagram account at found Ellen Montgomery to collect those references. And so Elisa is going to be challenging all of you to help her collect these references to Montgomery, what we're calling sightings of Montgomery out in the wild. Um, so we look forward uh, to getting your submissions um, and you can follow uh, the submissions at hashtag found Ellen Montgomery. I think it's really exciting because eventually it'll be an archive of references to Montgomery and unexpected or even maybe more expected places. Um, one thing that a virtual conference allows us to do too is to have virtual conversation. So we're looking forward to having some discussions about Montgomery and her life, her legacy, her writing on Facebook as well. So be sure to follow the LMMI social media for updates on all of those interactive and hopefully fun activities. So as of today, you should be able to um, explore our full program and see all the exciting content that will be posted over the next few days. Uh, there's already articles and papers and blogs uh, posted from scholars all over the world um, engaging with Montgomery and Vision in different ways. Uh, I, and there are also a variety of special events happening. The, the Kaylee um, information is posted as well as a wonderful online store of Montgomery related content from the local Charlottetown bookstore, The Bookmark. Um, but as you'll see, there are different ways to engage over the next few days with um, reading and participating and listening and learning from people all over the Montgomery community. So we're not going to go into too much detail here. Um, you can listen to a short uh, podcast that I did with Brenton Dickinson to learn more. Um, and you can refer to the five-day schedule. Both the podcast and the schedule are available now on the forum. So a really helpful way to know what's happening is, of course, to follow us, um, the Ellen Montgomery Institute on social media. And you can do that on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, if you're not already following us. Follow the hashtag LMMI2020. So LMMI2020, it's the one that we were using for the conference. Um, and there will be daily reminders. So if you go to the Journal of Ellen Montgomery Studies.ca, there's a news tab. And under the news tab, we'll be um, putting together helpful full overviews of each day, which will have links out to the various um, pieces that will be published on that day. So the news menu on the Journal of Ella Montgomery Studies.ca is a good way to find out everything that's happening on a particular day. There will also be other welcome messages posted um, in written form for other members of the Ella Montgomery community just to get us all excited about the Vision Forum and what's to come. So please make sure that you join us for the finale, which will be uh, uh, Atlantic time. It will be at noon. It's going to be a live uh, event that you can, can uh, come in and, and, and comment on. Um, and uh, what we'll be doing at the finale uh, will be, uh, there will be award announcements uh, as well. We will be announcing the next visiting scholar and the theme for the 2022 conference will also be announced at the finale. It'll be an exciting moment. It is very yeah. exciting. Um, and one thing we really want to emphasize is that we are launching the Ella Montgomery Envisioned Forum over these five days, but that's not the end of it. We will be publishing material going into 2021 associated with Ella Montgomery Vision. but there are two important deadlines to remember. If you aren't already on the Vision Conference program, we are asking you to submit statements of expression by August 15th. So August 15th, let us know if you are interested in submitting um, work on Vision, and that might be to the forum or to the journalist 
itself. So there will be two separate streams. There will be conference linked material on the forum, and then there will be a vision collection on the Journal of Ellen Montgomery Studies. So let us know by August 15th, and then we'll be asking for complete pieces by the very very end of the year, so December 31st. And you can find out more information again on the news page of the journal website or send us an email and we'll be happy to fill you in. So as a way of summing up, and thank you, Kate and Emily, for joining me today, I want to mention again the podcast that I did with Brenton because I, I end with an observation that I think bears repeating. Uh, and in that bo- podcast, I say that the Montgomery Biennial Conference traditionally has a diverse group of people attending, diverse in terms of interests and stage and kind of career and country of origin and residence. Um, and we hope that the material being presented over the next five days, well, indeed, the next six to eight months, will appeal to this diverse community of scholars, researchers and teachers, creative artists and writers, actors and musicians, those whose interests come from the fields of tourism, publishing, book selling, books and memorabilia collecting, and those who attend just to listen and join the conversation as occasions arise. This is what we envision that the Ellen Montgomery Envision Forum will provide. The beauty of this kind of forum is that everyone can participate even those who may not have been able to attend an on-site conference for personal, professional, or geographical reasons. This year's original program included papers from scholars, not only from Canada and the US, but also from Japan, Sweden, Finland, Norway, the UK, Ireland, Germany, Austria, Slovakia, Poland, and South Africa. While our biennial gathering is an international conference. This forum, the forum that you're going to be experiencing over the next six to eight months, this forum has given us the opportunity to become a truly global community by reaching out to all who love and appreciate the legacy of L.M. Montgomery. So thank you and enjoy.